talk about ozone and whether ozone is a doping case. Doping is uh, def defined as artificial time limited improvement in performance by a stimulatory agent working by reduction of defatigation and enhancement of self-assurance. That's a scientific uh, definition. And substances are prohibited by international regulation regarding athletes taking part in competition in sporting events. Now, which are involved? That are first sympathomimetic amines, analeptics, amphetamine, adrenaline, ephedrine, cardiaca, steroids, hormones, and other substances. Other substances under this definition ozone is integrated. But we have to distinguish between doping athletes and medical therapy for patients. Can any law prevent a doctor to use a medication to treat patients attending him only because the medication is used in doping too? The answer is not at all. Medical, uh, medical use of medication used in doping too. Sympathomatic amines, the psychoanalytics in case of depression. Why shouldn't we treat our patients with that? Analeptics, in case of severe hypertension, in case of emergency, we have to do that. Cardiaca, if you're getting old, heart insufficiency in elderly. Why shouldn't we stay away from this medication? Steroids, cases of rheumatism or cancer, can we stay away because of a doping law? Hormones, in case of defined deficiency, and ozone, in case of brain strokes, chronic fatigue syndrome, wound healing, and burns. We are here to focus on ozone therapy. How does ozone work? The procedure in the major autohemotherapy is that we are drawing blood that we are drawing blood and then we take ozone gas in syringe. And we should take in mind that the ozone gas, gas contains 97% of oxygen and only 3% of ozone. That's a, a concentration of 60 micrograms per cc of ozone. And that's the reason why we can't inject it directly, intravenously. Because then the ozone is gone, but we get an embolism, an oxygen gas embolism. And then we draw the blood and we let the ozone gas bubble through. And the major point is the ozone is gone here. There is no ozone. And in the supernatant there is no ozone by chemical laws. It's the same thing if you take a blood bag. You are taking the blood bag, draw blood, and then let the ozone gas bubble through. Here is no ozone left. Nobody can tell us what we did afterwards. And there is no oxygen, ozone left. It's only oxygen. To show you the concentration, this, this one here is the ozone concentration in microgram per cc. And we have here the oxygen content. Now, if you go here to 60 micrograms, you see we have 97% of oxygen. Uh, we fix in China that the uh, highest concentration you can use in major autoimmune therapy. Because if you're coming here, you will get a hemolysis. And if you are going to other micrograms, you see, even in local treatment, you can 
have a surprisingly, a surprisingly effect. I know from a paramedic in Germany who put an elderly woman into a body bag and infused 100 micrograms per, per cc. Five minutes later, the lady was, was administered to a, to a hospital because of the big bag <laughs> with ear loss, hearing loss. Uh, of course, the ozone is oxidizing the fatty acids in the skin and is producing ozonides and these ozonides, primary ozonides, are highly explosive. Formation of ozone. We have, a, for instance, the oleic acid, that is C18. We have a double bond here. Ozone impacts and is making a ozonide. That's the secondary ozonide. The primary ozonide has all three in line and therefore it's so explosive. That's the effect we are doing on any cell membrane. And what's happening then? Only for short, because it's... We have to detoxify the, uh, the ozonate in the cell membrane. That is done by enzyme, glutathione, peroxide, and reductase. And in the wake of the following reactions, we get ATP. ATP is a general energy carrier we are producing every day. We need to produce. We are producing around 70 kilograms a day to burn and to propel our, our body. ATP is not only, only produced, for instance, from uh, humans or mammals. Bacteria produce it too. They give it into the space between the bacterial uh, cells and tell the other cell, okay, everything is fine. Plants do it too. If you kill, for instance, the ATP in the plant system, they get fungus infected because all the plants or most of the plants have a collaboration of the mycorrhiza, the bacteria and funguses in the root system. But this is a controlled infection, which is suppressed by ATP. And if you take the ATP away, the, cell will, the plant will die. Now, we call it the pento shunt, uh, produces the ATP. And ATP is a universal energy carrier, mainly produced in the respiratory chain of the mitochondria. <coughs> but in case of our impact on the cell membrane, the so-called glycolysis, the destruction of glucose, is producing ATP too. Here we have a normal metabolism inside our capillary system. The major players are the RBCs, and therefore we have the major autohemotherapy because by the sheer volume of the red blood cells we gain the ATP. And they put it in stock and give it away. And they constantly have a 1.0 mmol per milliliter of full blood of ATP. They produce it. And the main thing is they produce it, but they don't use it. <coughs> they don't use it. And the uh, thrombocytes are sensing the ATP. And as long as ATP is there, everything is fine. The leukocytes are sensing ATP too, rolling along the capillary system on the endocell. And then, in case of inflammation, in a disturbance of the normal situation, the ATP is used and transformed into ADP, that was, is a cut of one phosphorus atom. And <clears throat> the red blood cells can't deliver so much ATP anymore. The thrombocytes sense ATP and start uh, communication with the leukocytes and the inflammation starts. And what we try to do in our ozone treatment we are delivering to this situation ATP 
filled red blood cells which give away the ATP so that we get an overload of ATP again and the ADP is neglected. Ovum attacks membrane lipids with chemical double bonds located in the cell membrane. That's the reason why we can't inject ozone gas. On the first impact on the endothelium, the ozone is gone. And then you don't have a general impact on the whole body, only on the local spot. And why can we, why can we treat wounds, infected wounds, killing bacteria and are inducing wound healing. The wounds are healing up in 30% of the normal healing time. The reason is, this is our cell membrane, for instance, in the RBC or in the cell. The ozone is coming to the cell membrane and transforming the cell membrane into a ozonite. The mitochondria are sitting inside the cell. They are not reached by ozone. The same thing is in the plant system. Outside cell membrane, inside the respiratory chain. And bacteria, they have the respiratory chain, that's a chemical reaction where we produce ATP, on the outside of the inner membrane. Ozone comes and oxidizes this chain, the bacteria will die. So we have a double effect on our wound. Normal cells are producing ATP, bacteria will die. Is that working? It was a lady, heavy smoking, so she quit smoking. Um, three, for three months without effect. And then they proposed to cut off the forefoot. She came to me and asked me for help one day before the planned surgical operation. You, you see, it's a gangrene. That's the effect of ozone therapy after three months. You don't see, you don't see a scar as we would have expected and even the nail is growing out. The reason was not the smoking, the reason was the anti-baby pill. Yeah? And uh, she is totally fine. That's uh, very nice, that was my friend with the table saw. Yeah. <laughs> I always say, these guys can, can uh, regenerate a tail or a limb. Why can't we do that? You see, he was treated by a surgeon. He tried to, to fix all the material. Uh, locally treated, first day. You see, the wound is covered already. The epithelium is closed. And that's after two weeks. The reason why we can do that is, in the afternoon we will see it, we are activating stem cells. We have all stem cells in the crypts of the skin, but as long as there is a, in, an inflammation, the stem cells are transformed into cells producing the scar and not producing skin or something. Old lady stumbling at night time over their dog, uh, over her dog. Six hours later is coming to my clinic. This you can slip over. And everybody expects because there is no blood supply, this will be getting black as a gangrene. You hardly can see the scar. That's after three weeks. Very bad lower leg wounds. After breaking the, the lower leg, uh, there was a wound not healing up. That uh, patient was 86 years old. <clears throat> you can't 
telling, stay in bed, you mustn't move. Yeah. So he was walking around, and that's after three months, additional ozone treatment. Dentistry. You see here, there was the inflammation, his tooth was bad, it was under surgery, and if you rinse that area with ozone water, you get this clear picture. The bleeding stops at once. And this one is the fourth day after surgery. Fourth day. Yeah? And even it was my case. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you see, there is no swelling. Nobody can see that they, that they hit me that way, yeah? And here is one of the doping cases. The same day, it was the third day, this guy had an open wound on the leg, on the, the back leg, and uh, normally the owner told me, kicks and bites. Didn't do that. I could treat him with a major hemotherapy after the third treatment, the wound was closed, which uh, wet didn't, didn't get over three three months. So, now short look at stroke. That is a warning of the International Stroke uh, Association about RTPA. RTPA is a medication which should reopen the affected vessel. You can use it only three to three and a half, four hours after stroke onset. Seventy percent of the people are not coming in that window. So afterwards, the therapy is wait and see and do nothing. If you treat the people with RTPA, that were 18 cases each, that's a control, doing nothing. The other one is RTPA. <coughs> then you see they have here the advantage against the controllers, but they are killing one patient. So it's not a major progress. About 15 years ago, I published in the Ozone Handbook 45 patients of mine with ozone therapy in acute brain stroke. Um, that's Ozone therapy, that's control of the Framingham study. Stage 1, totally recovered. Stage 2, handicapped but managing daily life. And this was very important, totally disabled. Under 45, none. Of course, we, can, we cannot compare 45 people, cases, with the Flemingham study, several hundred thousand people. But if we manage to cut this 17% down to 10, we give millions of people a decent life after stroke. And we should think about it. So in China is now a double-blinded <coughs> controlled study on the way in a multi-center fashion under the leading of Shenyang CMU, China Medical University. Uh, that's the director, Professor Han. That's Professor Luo. She is in charge of the multi-center study. That was last year. So, so a summary of key data to ozone therapy. Ozone is a medication delivering ATP. In clinical use, it is never a doping agent. And ozone therapy is valid in diseases conventional medicine lacks any success. Thank you very much for your attention.